Yo, what's up guys? So today I'm going to be showing you 10 of my favorite card controls. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm starting a pretty cool new series and I'm going to be referring to this video uh, quite often uh, during that series. Now, I've taught a few of these controls before in the past in some of my older videos. So the reason why I'm doing this is so they're all in one place and I'll leave some timestamps down below and you can easily get to them uh, with no problems trying to find old videos and all that. The reason why these are my favorite is because these are most, I think, um, useful and practical and ones that I actually use in real life performances uh, the most. All right, so this first one is called the Swivel Cut Control by a guy named Gilles Couture. And here's what it looks like. So a card is selected and let's say we have the three of hearts and it gets lost back in the middle. And you know what, I'll cut that a little deeper just so it's really lost and you know what, it's back on top. All right, so the way this works is that there is a card selected and you wanna keep a break above it in any manner that you want to. It doesn't really matter how you get to this position, just as long as there's a card picked and you have a, a break above it in the deck like this. Now, what you wanna do is transfer that break to a thumb break so you're holding the pack in middle grip just like this. Now, what you're gonna do is swing cut or lift up half of that upper packet with your index finger like this. So you're sort of in a Z position, uh, just like that, all right? But that's all hidden because the hand covers everything. So you wanna turn to the side so they don't see that big mess right there, all right? So you're like this. And what you're gonna do is swing cut over half that portion like this into your hand. And then with your thumb, uh, you contact the back and then you swivel that on top of the uh, this packet here like this. So now it looks like you've cut that card deeper, but really you cut it to the top. So again, fully exposed, you have the card selected, have the queen of hearts, It's uh, you have a break above it like this uh, with your thumb. So you swing over half like this, then come over to the back, contact that upper portion and with your thumb, swivel it, and then throw the rest on top. And then the card is controlled to the top. Same thing can be applied if you want to control to the bottom, just reverse the actions, all right? So in this case, we have the, the five of clubs selected, keep a break below it as you close up. So you have that break uh, below it in this case. So what you're gonna do here is just reverse the actions, do the swivel cut first like this. So their card is already on the bottom and then just do a swing cut, right? So at full speed, it would look like this. You have a card picked, remember that card, all right? And then, it, you know what, I'll cut it a little deeper just like this and then it's on the bottom. So this next control is by Harry Riser. It doesn't really have a name. He just explains it in his books. All right, here's, here's what you do. You have a card selected in a spread and you up jog it like this. Now what you're gonna do is, let's say you want the card to be controlled third from the bottom, all right? So what you're gonna do is spread over two cards past their up jog card like this and keep break below those two cards as you close up. All right, so there's their card. There's the two cards you want to get a break below as you close up, just like this. So when you close up, you come up and you show them the card they picked. And you can be very fair about this as you come down. You can actually have them push in the card all the way flush like this, but you still have that break below those two cards, so it doesn't matter, right? So at this point, you can do the Gilligas Couture control, the swivel cut control, right? So I'll cut that a little deeper like this, just like that, their card is controlled third uh, from the bottom. So let's say you want to do that same control, but you want to control it maybe a second or a third from the top, all right? So the same thing, the card gets out jogged, but in this case, as you close up, you just get a break above two cards above their card as you close up. So you can see two cards as you close up, just get a break below, oh, I'm sorry, above those. As you close up, same procedure, show them the card, they can push it all the way. Uh, you can do either a double undercut, right? Or the, I, I just love that Gilles Couture uh, swivel cut control. So now their card is third from the top. Or you can do it any number of cards you want from the top. It doesn't really matter, it's up to you. So here's one of my all time favorite controls. I've taught it maybe three times in, in the past in my old videos, but uh, here it is again. So you can have it um, for reference, all right? It's called Flip Flop Plop by Paul Harris. You've seen it before, here's, here's what it looks like. So they pick a card and let's say they um, pick that one there. So what you're gonna do is lift up maybe a fourth of the pack with your index finger like this and plop that whole section into your hand like this. And you, you wanna make that plop sound like this so they can hear that and see that. So they, they do that. They replace the card, the two of hearts. Now what you're gonna do is come over here and uh, grab 
this lower portion um, like this between your thumb and middle finger like this. Just pick that up with your thumb and middle finger. Now what you're gonna do is sort of Monty throw this top packet into your hand like this, just like that. It's kind of hard to do slow, but uh, in full speed you, you just do that. And then you repeat that action, that lifting up action. Only this time you're gonna throw the bottom portion because their card is right there, right? So you just throw the bottom portion like this and then slap the rest on top. It looks very convincing, but their card is on top. So I'll do that again. The rest of their card is the Nine of Hearts. Now look how convincing this looks, just like this in full speed. It really looks good. Now here's a control that I do probably every time I per perform the card magic, but I've never really taught it on my channel in detail. Uh, maybe one time for another thing, but that, that doesn't matter. So here it is, uh, Ed Marlowe's convincing control, or at least my handling of it, all right? So what you're gonna do is spread the deck and have them touch the back of any card, okay? So once they do that, they touch this one right here. Now what you're gonna do is come up to show them the card. Now as you do that, you break the spread so their card is on the face of the, of the spread you show them, right? So their card is the five of spades. But what you're going to do is once they pick the card, you're going to sort of align the card that is above it uh, like this. Not It doesn't have to be perfect. It's, it's not a double lift, all right? So just sort of align them. Maybe that much is fine. You can see how much that have that aligned um, and then show the card. So you're not doing it perfectly. You're just doing it enough to where they're almost aligned like this as you come up, all right? So at this point, what you're going to do is take your finger and show them the card. Look, remember that card, the eight of diamonds. Now, as you're doing this, you're gonna come down. And this is all you're doing. You take your thumb, and then you just grab that card that's above it like this. This is exposed to you. You just grab that card out of the spread like that. So as you come down, you're just grabbing that card above it. Now, if you're just doing this by itself, that's not gonna look good. You're gonna know it's a switch. So you have the spread, you come up, you align those cards. You just practice doing that for a minute with taking that card above it like this. All right, get good at doing that swiftly and smoothly, and then we can move on to the next step. All right, so they see the card, and take that card that's above it. The way you're gonna hide it is with a cull, all right? So what you're gonna do is as you come up, you do your alignment move, you come up, show them the card, and you as you come down, that's when you switch it, right? But as you do that, these fingers are already contacting the selected card, all right? So what you're gonna do as you pull that above card out, you just do this. You just pull that card in with your fingers. It's the easiest thing in the world to do that, all right? You can do it all the time, but you just don't know it. All right, so look, here it is. The full control. You do the alignment move as you come up, show them the card. As you come down, pull the above card out. As you do the finger pulling in, you do that at the same time so nothing is seen, right? So this is what it looks like, boom. Now, once you get good at doing that switch, it's completely hidden with that coal, right? Boom, four of clubs. And then it looks like it's the same card, but this is the situation. That card is being called that four of clubs as there's an X card right there. So here's what's gonna happen. The card is out jogged and you're gonna keep spreading the cards, allowing that cold card to just ride along all the way to the bottom of the deck, just like that. So at full speed, here's what it looks like. Have them pick a card. See this that one right there, the Jack of Hearts. So that could have been any card, but uh, we'll push it in all the way and the card is controlled to the bottom. Don't let calling a card scare you. It's really very, very easy once you are comfortable with doing that switch move and the pulling in of the fingers. It's almost automatic that the card will just ride to the bottom on its own, all right? So I'll do that one more time slowly. Show them the card, do the alignment, come up, right? Point to it. Take your thumb, you always wanna contact it with your thumb as you come down to pull it out. And then as you're doing that, just pull in. It's pull, it's pull out, pull in, remember that, all right? So pull out, pull in, the card is switched and it just rise to the bottom as it should. Boom. Now once it's there, once it's on the bottom, you can do anything. You can shuffle it to back to the top if you wanted to with an overhand shuffle so you can have it on top if you want. All right, so here's another Marlow gem. It's actually the first uh, video that I posted on my channel. It's called Switch Out Sidelights, or sometimes called the Flexible Control. And it's almost like the convincing control in a way. So here's what you're gonna do. You're going to, here's what it looks like. I'll show you what it looks like first, all right? So you have a card picked. Let's say it's the Ace of Hearts, all right? So the Ace will go right around there 
and then uh, put the race cars back on top. You know what? Boom. Just like that. It's back on top. So here's how to do that. What you want to do is have a card picked. And you don't have to align it this time, all right? They can really just pick any card. You come up with the spread, show them the card. Now what you're going to do is make it appear as though you just grab that card off the spread like this as you come down. But what's really going to happen is you're going to take two cards, right? Their card plus their card above it. All right, so fully exposed, very slowed down. You have them pick a card, you show them the card. Now what you're gonna do is align this edge with the packet, all right? So you align the edge of their selection with the packet as you come down to apparently take it, all right? So this is exposed view. Apparently take the card, aligning that card with the packet and making it look like that second card is their card, right? So that's fully exposed and very slowed down. You should never do that in performance. You want to make it as smooth as possible and you the grab happens at when you're still vertical all right so you do this you have them pick a card you apparently grab it but uh, when you come down you just do that you take, just take two cards that's all it is taking two cards but the alignment is very important so have them touch the card they touch this one right here show them it you apparently grab it really taking two cards this is exposed view um you just you want to jam it into the crotch of your thumb all right so you do this Laying them both down, push that over. And you wanna insert this card into the other spread like this, put the rest back on top and boom, their card's controlled to the tippy top. You can also do this on the table, which is how it was originally written up, all right? So here's how that works. So you have them pick the card, you show them, everything is the same. You come down and you just put these on the table, take the card, put it there, put the rest on top, square up, and their card is on top. Here's another favorite of mine. It's just uh, just reliable, you know, it's it's never let me down and it's just one of those that's easy, effective and deceptive, all right, all at the same time. So here's what happens. It's the tip over change by Jack Merlin. I do it a lot and you've probably seen me do it before. Here's what it looks like. So card is selected and let's say we have this one here, the seven of diamonds, we put it right there or towards the bottom, snap of the fingers, it's back on top. So here's how that works. So you wanna get a break on the bottom card with your pinky by a pull down or however you want. You can do the old ripple method if you want to, but I like to do the pinky pull down. It's easy for me. Any way you want to get a break above the bottom card with your pinky or with your thumb. Either way, you need to have it with your thumb to start out, all right? So what you wanna do is cut the deck in packets like this, have them say stop. And once they do, uh, push that card forward with your fingers like this. Now, as that's happening, you just let go of the card above the thumb break, or you can just grab it with your pinky like this to add the card on uh, to that packet. So once you've unloaded that card, it's of course hidden by the upper packet, but it has to stay hidden, right? So what you're gonna do is turn your hand over like this so they can't see that added on card. Now, a good way to hide that further is just by tilting up, all right? So a lot of people, they totally flash that card when, when they're doing this. So a good way to hide that is of course, by tilting up, showing them the card like this. So you remember that card, it goes right there. Now what you're doing here is of course, you're taking your index finger and you're pushing the card in at the same time, turn your hand over and pushing the card over. So it's, this is the switch and exposed view, boom, boom. That's all you're doing, all right? So you're, you're here, show them the card, the card will go here and then you Put it somewhere in the middle of this half, put the rest back on top, and boom, it's controlled to the top. So this next control is a total bluff, but we can sort of hide that further with things that we say and do, and with, uh, I don't know what I'm saying, but here's what it is, all right? So it's a false cut by Bobby Bernard, and this the false cut is this. So the queen of hearts is on top of the deck. We give the deck a cut like this, and uh, the queen is still on top of the deck. Now, I'm, I'm sure you've seen that cut before. It's very simple. I'll leave the card face up so you can follow along, all right? So what you do is a normal swing cut, and then you just tap, the top of the packet like this and set that down and then do that. So you're mimicking the actions of a cut, but you're not really cutting the deck at all. All right, so it looks like a cut. It feels like a cut. It sounds like a cut, but it's not a cut at all. You're not doing anything. So once again, just gonna cut half into your hand, tap the upper portion with the original bottom half, set that bottom half right on the table, and then pop these back on top at an angle. I like to do that and then square it up like this and you have your uh, false cut. Now, how do we incorporate that into a card control? Very easy. What you do is you dribble the deck like this and you have them say stop anywhere. So once they do, 
you show them your card like this as you put this packet down. So once again, they say stop anywhere, you slap that packet on the table, show them their card, all right? And then what you do here is that false cut. So look, we'll bury your card into the middle of the deck right about there, and then their card is controlled to the top. So they're really just doing the false cut as a card control. Now to make it a little bit more convincing, what you can do is tap both times. So when you dribble, just tap it as if you're doing the false cut, but really uh, you're doing it for real this time. So the second time seems normal, right? So dribble, tap it, put it down, show them the card, right? Do the false cut, do the tap, and then put everything back on top and there's your control. Uh, it's, I think it's pretty nice. Of course, you can do that same action with a riffle like this. So they, uh, you riffle down, they say stop, you do it for real, show them the card, you know, boom, do the control, and then the cards are, of course, back on top. Now, doing that riffle, you can incorporate a force uh, with that. So you can force a card if you wanted to, or if you needed to, with that riffle force, all right? So it's the king of clubs, all right? Get your break above it to, for your riffle force, and get your break like this. Uh, say stop any time, do the tap for the riffle force, show them the force card, then do the control, and then you are golden, pony boy. So this next one is a complete bluff of a multiple shift. It's by Peter Duffy, and here's what it looks like. So there's four aces on top of the deck, and you apparently lose them. Now this isn't really made for a camera. You need a misdirection to do this, all right? So when you're performing and talking, and you're you know gesturing around and uh, doing whatever, this is what you do. So you put the aces face down on top of the deck, and you sort of cut about a fourth of the deck over here, and you sort of tap and push that card forward. And you keep doing that. You keep uh, lifting up cards above the out jog and sliding them forward like this, as if they're the aces, but that's just a bluff. Because the aces are actually right here, and the three cards under that. So it looks like, when you square the deck, look, all four aces are in the middle, but really they're just right there and underneath. So as you close up, I push that in, getting a break above it, pushing in all the cards, and then you have your break there. So you cut half the cards above the break to the table, then all the cards above the break for a triple cut, and boom, you have all the cards controlled to the top. So once again, you're talking, you're showing the aces, and you say, look, I wanna lose the aces in the middle of the deck, and you're just talking, gesturing, and you just do this, and you keep doing that, lifting up cards, cutting the cards in like this. So like all the cards are in the middle, Close that up, do the cut, and you have all the cards controlled to the top. Now when you do the initial move, you, that's when you wanna make eye contact with your spectator, right? Uh, because if they look at it, it'll be quite obvious. So show the aces, put them down, and you say, look, four parts of the deck, and you, as you say, four parts of the deck, you look them right in the eye, four parts of the deck, the aces go in, and that's when they look, all right? So they can look at all this, but uh, that initial cut is when you have to misdirect their eyeballs, all right? So this next control is really handy when you want to control a card second from the top. It's called Slipstream by Troy Hooser. Here's what it looks like. So a card is selected. Let's say we have the a Joker, really. All right, we have a card selected. We'll call it the, uh, the Seven of Hearts there. And that's about, oh, I don't know, 26 cards down, give or take, but it's just a quick snap. We can actually get that card second from the top. So this uses that switch taught earlier in the convincing control. So you're really just kind of calling a card. You're showing it, right? Doing that alignment move. Everything is the same, right? Do that in and out switch. And then you're here. And what you want to do is sort of close up the deck and that card is being called, but you're not calling it underneath the deck, you're calling it the second from top in this case. So in the action of saying, look, that's about 26 cards down, give or take, what you're gonna do is pull the card out with your finger like this with that top card. So you're just doing this, pulling that top and bottom card out like this. It's sort of like that milk shuffle action, right? Pulling the top and bottom cards out, but it's the selection and the top card that you're milking, all right? So you do that convincing control switch that I taught earlier, the king of clubs, boom, do the switch. Sort of spread the cards a little bit like this and say that's about, oh, 26 cards, don't give or take, as you do that milking action, right? So boom, that top card plus the cold card, 26 cards, don't give or take, you're, that's in a gesture action, so it's not really seen, right? So you do that, close up, and now a second from the top. 
One more time, fully exposed. So you have the car selected, do the alignment move, show the car, do the switch. And then here, uh, you're just doing this. You're just pulling the card out along with the top card like this. As you adjust your, that's about 26 cards down, give or take. And then it's control second from the top. It takes a lot of practice, I'm not gonna lie, but once you get it down, it's very smooth and it's a lot of fun to do. All right, so this next one is called the Reverse Glide by Harvey Rosenthal. Here's what it looks like. So a card is selected. Let's say we'll use the Queen of Hearts there. That's about, I don't know, halfway down. But I'll just throw cards on top of that. Square the deck, although I did all that, I have that card under my control on the bottom of the deck. So here's the action. And what you do is you dribble the deck and you show them the face card of the upper packet like this. And as you're doing that, you're getting a break under the top card of this lower packet out of view like this. So you have a break under that card there, just like that. All right, dribble the deck, they say stop. You show them the card, get your break there like this. Now what you're gonna do is simulate this, just taking the card off like this. But what's gonna happen really is that you add this card on the bottom of the deck as you move away. So you get that break. As you come over this way, you just add the card on like this. This is exposed to you. Add the card on, then take the card back as if it's that card. Put those down, put those on top. At this point, you can do anything. Throw those on top and the card is on the bottom of the deck. And that is Harvey Rosenthal's brilliant uh, reverse glide. Once again, I wanna show you this because I just love it so much. Dribble the deck. Uh, nine of diamonds get, the, get your break and this also can be done in the hands all right so you show them the card do the move you put it right there like this and then it's on the bottom of the deck super slow down uh exposed view six of clubs get your break right that gets added on boom just take the card back immediately then that happens and it's controlled to the bottom you can also incorporate a really sneaky uh, glimpse uh, with this. So this is what you do. You do the move, they say stop, show them the card. And then when you do the move, you just sort of like, like weigh this pack. You say that's about, oh, I don't know, 26 cards. And as you're doing this, you're just looking at that card, their selection. You say that's about, oh, 26 cards and put the cards down and you put the card there and you've already glimpsed the selection so you know what it is and then uh, do anything from there that you want to. All right, so thanks for watching this video and be looking out for this new series, it's gonna be awesome. So until next time, happy practicing. I love you guys.